Hi, this is Glenda, and today I wanted to show you how I managed to keep butter fluid for a soap technique despite having several things going against me. Number one was that my lye concentration was 40%. This means that I have little water in the soap. And for this recipe, for example, 40% of lye concentration equals to 3.48 ounces of water. Now, if you're more used to seeing the numbers from soap calc, they usually go by a 38% percentage of water based on the oil amount or on the oil weight. So, if I was going by that, this would be close to doing 22% uh, using a 22% instead of 38%, so a significant water discount. I'm not saying that you should have a small amount of water in your soap. No, I'm, I'm simply saying that you could keep your soap butter fluid despite of that. I'm using 40% because that that's how my master batch of line is set for. That's how I made it. I could have added more water, but I didn't. I wanted to take my chances. Now, if you want to understand more about uh, the percentage of light concentration, if you go to the Modern Soap Making website, she has a blog that explains it really well. And I'm going to link that below in the description box. In that blog post, about halfway from the page, she shows these graphics that simply show uh, the light solution and then how you have usually 75% of water in it and then 25% of lye. Now for me, because I live in a very humid area, having that much water is not good for my soap. It makes it too sticky. It doesn't harden fast enough to be removed from the mold. Um, usually I like to use a 33% lye solution. It gives it's a good balance because it, it allows you to do some swirls, do some design, but still it sets up faster. But lately I've been moving to doing a 40% lye solution. And she warns you that a stronger lye solution is going to trace more quickly. But I, I kind of like that because it means that my soap is gonna shrink less because it has less water. So during the cure time, it's not the cure time is also going to be reduced slightly uh, because there is not so much water to be lost. The second thing that was working against me was my recipe. I only have 30% of olive oil in this recipe and the rest are butters or solid oils or castor oil which is known to trace fast. Ideally, if you want to have a fluid recipe, one that stays fluid for the longest, you want to use about 60% of slow-moving oils. Slow-moving oils are usually the fluid oils like olive oil, sweet almond oil. And there is an article uh, by Soap Queen where she covers and she gives you examples of which oils are slow-moving. So I'm going to link that below as well. So me having about 70% of fast tracing oils is not good. However, I managed to keep it fluid and that's what I want to show you. So here is a printout of the recipe that I showed you earlier. And now I'm going to measure a very small amount of the fragrance that I want to use to see if it's going to work for this recipe. I'm only measuring it, um, enough to fragrance about one ounce of soap. I'm measuring it's 0.05 ounces pretty much because I want to make sure that the fragrance is not going to work against me since I already have so many more things going against me. The fragrance has to work with me. My oils are at 45 degrees Celsius or 113 Fahrenheit. Usually they tell you keep your oils at room temperature if you want them to stay fluid. Now my light water solution, it's at room temperature. It's 26 Celsius or usually about 76 Fahrenheit. 
but I don't keep my oils at room temperature because I have too many solid oils and if I kept them at room temperature I will get false trays and I want to avoid that and I will also get steric acid spots so the first thing that I'm going to do to keep it moving slow is that I'm barely going to use the stick blender I'm mostly going to use the spatula to incorporate the lye water solution with the oils and when I do use the stick blender it's just going to be just for a little bit I left this blend alone for about three minutes while I went to look for another backup fragrance in case the one that I have doesn't work out Normally, I don't like the sound that the stick blender makes. It's too loud for me. So I lowered the volume there just to show you that I only did three bursts and then I moved it. I kept moving the spatula around it. Then I'm trying to see if I have reached emulsion, which I don't think I have. However, I wanted to play it safe. So I didn't stick blend it anymore. Since I still have to add the fragrance, I have to add colorants. So from now on, it's just the spatula and me, and bye-bye stick blender. So now I'm going to add one ounce of soap butter into the cup that has the 0.05 ounces of fragrance, the one that I wanted to use, just to see, to test it and see how it's going to behave. I'm going to stir it in, and then I'm going to let it sit for about... Um, couple minutes two minutes to see how it does now at this point I'm not even sure that my oils and my light water solution have emulsified so I'm just stirring them so if they haven't reached emulsion yet it should be fine to leave it there the fragrance that I was testing was candy cane from make your own the label has faded so you can't see it but after stirring both the containers, I just walked away and I came back two minutes later. It's been two minutes. My main blend is still at a motion phase. And the fragrance one is at trace. which means it's probably not the best fragrance for this technique because I need a fragrance that won't do anything to it so it's been about 5 minutes my soap still at emulsion and this is at trace for sure so I'm gonna use Yuzu instead, it's supposed to behave well and it's a lot of citrus, so I think it's true. Most citrus fragrance oils do behave well as long as they don't have a spice in the blend. Um, I like to look at the description of the fragrance and also read the reviews and I look for words that said decelerating or slows trace or this one is good for intricate designs or intricate swirls because then I know that those fragrances are going to play nice they're going to behave well with my soap and I try to read the reviews more than the fragrance description because usually the fragrance description if the manufacturer or the retailer has tested the fragrance they have done it with a soap recipe that is nothing like mine Usually they have tested it with a recipe that has 50 to 70 percent of olive oil or any other slow moving oil. So of course it's going to behave well with a recipe like that. But because it's not similar to mine, it doesn't tell me anything of what to expect for my soaps. Now I pour one layer at the bottom when I remember that I need it to transfer it to smaller cups. I was stirring it to see if it was at light trays yet and it wasn't. It was still just at a motion phase, which for this technique it should work. 
and I do have a pencil underneath the mold that I will alternate between pouring. The purpose of the cup is just to ensure that I pour the same amount of soap on each layer. Um, I believe some people weigh the amounts or separated it ahead of time. I didn't do that. I just separated it before each pour. Overall, this was a very messy process and I'm not fond of the technique, so I don't think I'm going to try it again. Besides, I didn't get a lot of success from it. However, I was happy that the soap batter stay fluid throughout or enough for me to be able to achieve it. It took me about eight minutes to finish pouring and fill in the whole mold. And so during that time, it did stay fluid. I did a feather swirl on top and then I set it apart. The following day, I removed it from the mold and I should have waited longer. However, I couldn't because this was for a challenge, the sub making form challenge. It did come out of the mold, but it felt soft, so I had to be extra careful when cutting it. So on my first bark, I was happy because I got the shimmy effect that I was after, but I only had it in two bars, this one and the second one. All of the other ones, they just look like lateral drop swirls. So not really there. I'm not really sure what happened. Some people thought that it might be because if I don't do a uh, pour along the wall, then it just becomes like a drop sort of if it goes straight into the batter. So maybe that was it. But anyway, thank you for joining me. I hope you like this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.